So, so two five zero. Oh, so, you get, do you guys know the story how we started that sellout streak? The old guys probably know, but young people don't. The millennials have no clue. In fact, the millennials probably weren't even born yet. So, in two thousand one, uh, I, uh, you know, two thousand was my first year, and I'm looking at that uh, sellout streak every day. I'm running stadiums in the football stadium, so I decided. Uh, I challenged our fans, like, why don't we start a sellout streak in volleyball? So that was in 2001. And Husker fans have come through. And I was really nervous when we moved to Devaney that we would have a hard time keeping that. And now it's almost, uh, and Coach Osborne, you know, I, I only wanted 6,000 seats in Devaney. He made it 8,000. And I was worried, like, okay, there's no way we're going to keep this. And now maybe we should have made it bigger. So. Our fans are awesome, and uh, that's an impressive streak. Nothing else in women's sports in the NCAA comes even close in any sport, anytime, anywhere. So there's no place like Nebraska on that. Got Penn State Rutgers. Got to get better this week. In the past, what have you done to develop an aggressive attacking mindset on teams where maybe it's not there? Um, we, we, you know, we, we drill it in practice. We train it in practice. We compete. We don't get them. They don't get out of the drill until they find a way out. But uh, you know, the problem has been the last pretty much three weeks with our schedule. It's been we've had very few training days where we could train hard because I've just been trying to maintain them and keep them fresh for matches. And uh, after I watched the video against Illinois, I mean, you know, it was a great match. Illinois played great, but, you know, they're coming off three home matches and we're coming off four road matches in 10 days. So I think we, there was a little fatigue with us, um, you know, and that's the fluke of the Big Ten schedule. You know, there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages depending on what schedule you have. And um, so it's been really hard to train. We'll get a chance to train some this week and work on that. Uh, I have a list, two pages, so we don't have enough time here. Is what's, that, what's at the top of the list? Um, I, uh, probably the top of the list would be uh, under, uh, doing what we're trained to do. And uh, there's a lot of areas, and again, maybe it's fatigue, maybe it's stress, maybe it's uh, who we're playing, but uh, we're getting, uh, we're not doing things that we're trained to do. So we're not trusting our training. And so we've got to go back to that. And part of that is uh, I learned, since we're doing history today, so a lot of coaches think at the end, toward the end of the season, you know, you just, you know, you just go in and tune them up and play. But we work on fundamentals every day. And I learned that lesson when I was here as an assistant watching Coach Osborne and the football team train. Every day they're working on foot, footwork, fundamentals, movement. They break it down every day. Every day we break down our fundamentals. And then when I was at Wisconsin, I took a team to Russia, our first international trip to Russia. And over the course of this, we started off playing great. And then toward the end, we were awful. And because we weren't training fundamentals every day. And so part of the problem, you know, we try to do it every day. But when you lose training time and you're just trying to survive competing with your schedule, you lose some of that fundamentals. And so we got to go back to fundamentals. It's I lay awake at night uh, trying to decide how hard to push, what to do, how hard to train, how hard to push somebody uh, and challenge them in practice, how hard to push the team. It's, it, it's such a delicate balance. And you're just always, um, you know, on the, it's, it's just a really hard balance to know. So you just I go, I talk to our captains, I talk to our strength coach, I go with what my gut says, I look at what we've done the last three, four years. I'm, you know, I look back at our practices, what we did, how we did, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, there's a real art to that. Pushing their buttons, not just physically, but maybe mentally, as in, should I get more tough love here? Do I need to build their confidence? Do you battle with that as well? All, always, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're constantly talking about that, how to get, do better, and, um, and, and uh, you know, how to work at that. And each week's a new challenge, depending on how the week before it went, whether you win or lose, each week's a new challenge. And you've got to kind of fix things and maintain things and figure out how to get better. John, what's it going to take to pull them out of this funk? Maybe funk's not even fair to say because of the competition you've played. 
Yeah. Um, I just think a, a big win, you know, we got, we got to win and that winning fixes a lot of things. I mean, look at our football team. It's just a whole different vibe after they've won a couple games now, just being around them. I was down there at practice this morning a little bit. I mean, it's just a whole different vibe and winning fixes a lot of things. Losing puts a lot of doubt and, but this group needs to be resilient. They need to be tough. They're going to have to push through this. And, uh, so it's a great challenge and, uh, so I'm, I'm personally looking forward to the challenge. We haven't, I mean, we haven't had this challenge in the last three years. I mean, we've just been trying not to screw up losing a Big Ten championship. And now this is a new territory for especially our seniors. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited for this challenge and how to get this team to learn how to win close games. Because we've been in every match. We're still the best defensive team in the conference. Uh, we're just we got to make better decisions at critical times and that's comes from experience. It's youth It's a lot of new p people out there and new new uh, situations and we've been playing a very tough schedule I mean the, the, these are we're playing final four matches. I mean Illinois was a final four level match last week was I mean these are th th These are it's pretty impressive and how hard we've had to play in the level of play Uh, I don't know. We'll find out this week how they come in. You know, I, I, I think Michaela and Kenzie are, you know, they're tough, and uh, I mean, they get it, and uh, you know, I think they're willing. They're, they're, they want to work, and they want to, you know, get this team going in the right direction, and we got to get some other people to help them. Which players do you look to to, to sort of bring that intensity and that toughness to this team? Well, um, Michaela and Kenzie, obviously, uh, Lauren. Is somebody else that's starting to merge and show some leadership, which is great. Uh, Nicklin's got to, it's got to be her team, and she's learning how to do that as a freshman. That's what, why it's so hard to be a freshman at this level because, uh, you know, she's got all these other things going on, but it's got to be her team, and she's got to run the show out there. Uh, and, um, uh, and we'd like to see, you know, Lexi and Jazz step up more. But, uh, you know, it's a new role for Jazz, and it's a new role for Lexi, and, uh, you know, if we get all those three guys playing well, uh, we're a scary team. But we got to get them all playing well on the same night. And that's what we're searching for right now. Is there a difference you notice between James's approach this year compared to last year? No, we've looked at it. It's, it's all the same. Did you say the same kind of shots this year as you did last year? Well, you're asked about her approach to hit. Is that what um, I guess her, her approach to playing. Oh, approach to playing. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, jazz is jazz, and so uh, you know she's she's working hard. She's trying to get better. She's there hasn't been a day I didn't think she was coming in there to get better. So sometimes players just you know she again part of it is the connection with Nicklin. Uh, part of it is uh, she's you know has struggled, so she's got to learn how to pull through that. The reality is she wasn't that good this time last year either. She just got good at the end and had a great, great NCAA tournament. Look at her stats last year this time. They're pretty close. She was a little bit higher last year. And, and her blocking stats are double what they were last year. So she's improved 100% in her blocking, our, in our efficiency and blocks per game. She was 0.39 this time last year, blocks per game. She's at 0.9 now. For her right side, that's really good. And then our efficiency, she's probably our best efficiency-wise efficiency blocker, her, her and Lauren. Yeah? How is Penn State playing coming up? Um, uh, they just lost to Purdue, first time 1982. So you have to ask Russ. <laughs> I'm sure he'll give you an answer. So I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I haven't got to Penn State yet. Still working on us. You often said one of Kelly's best attributes last year was keeping the team loose in tense moments. Is there anybody on the team who can keep the team loose and not have them so intense? Um, there's nobody like Kelly, but they have their ways that they're, you know, they, they take care of that and, and uh, they have a plan what they do and how they interact. And uh, so I think, I think they've been doing a great job in that. So, because it, it could, you know, when you're, under that much stress, you know, negative things can come out. But they've been doing a really good job with that. 
It's just we got to find a way to b win some big points. And, you know, if you look at the Illinois match, we have two balls right on the back line. We get a bad call, and, you know, a replay call and a huge point that we you know, earn. We, we, we're right there. We make a big comeback game four. We serve in the net and make two hitting errors. I mean, it's just those are the kind of things that you're not going to be good teams doing that. You've got to learn how to take it from them, and we're not at that point mindset-wise. Now, can we get there? Heck yeah. <laughs>